Hi guys, I'm Lana. Hi, I'm Ashlyn. And this is the Second Breakfast Club. And today we're doing our review of Burn the Stage, episode six. Yes. So this is like we're really closing in on the end. I I believe you guys told us that there's only eight episodes. Mm -hmm. So we're in the final stretch. It's kind of sad. <laughs> like. I really have liked it so far. So this is Ep6 Moonchild, which I have to say right off the bat, I am thrilled they're referencing 4 o'clock. I love that song. I do too. I think this um, is my favorite episode so far. Mm. You, so definitely the one you got most emotional about. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. So I thought it was funny that it kind of just starts <laughs> with V hitting some high notes in a bathroom. Um, it's one of the only wordless opening stings that we've had so far. Um, but then it, it kind of goes into, you know, they're in Chile, they're backstage, they're talking. Um, and it starts with V, which we've mentioned he hasn't gotten a ton of play this mm -hmm. season outside of the one episode with him and Jin. But in this one, he's talking about how, like, He's always wanted to perform a song that he's written. He's always wanted to write songs, but he's always been really insecure about it. Um, and obviously this is here when they're talking about 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, which was really nice to see. Like, I don't know. It, it's nice to see V get to be open about his ambition and about projects he's proud of that he's gotten to do. Definitely. It's, it's nice to see where each member, you know, like V's always like, style and art and stuff like that. I feel like that's all just very, like, s superficial, quote-unquote, goals or what he aspires to be. I think it's really amazing to see that he's like, you know, I've always wanted to write music. I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do that. And now I finally have the opportunity. And it's actually my dreams coming true where I can perform. Yeah, like a solid goal instead of, like, uh, an ambiguous dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also really like it because we, we've talked a lot about how V, we feel like he gets talked over a lot, or like people don't take him seriously a lot, so it makes sense to me that he would want to write music. Like, definitely, he kind of wants to open his heart up, but I'm sure after, you know, the way he was stereotyped and a lot of the way people see him and talk about him, he's probably nervous to, like, really open his heart to everyone and say what he's thinking about because he's afraid everybody's going to think that he thinks weird. Well, and I, you know, we, weird is n not the thing. It's very unique, and you can tell in the four o'clock, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not he, saying you're saying yeah. that he's saying these words. No, I'm just I think he's it. actually incredibly poetic and lyrical. He is, and it, it's four o'clock alone is very, um, like, opens us up into like how he kind of views and sees mm -hmm. the world. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, I like that uh, as we go. As they've gotten stronger as individual creators, I feel like we're almost to the point where I can hear a song and tell you who wrote it. Mm -hmm. Because they're so unique. And Definitely. V has this Way really of painting with Exactly, his lyrics. really poetic, lyrical, really surreal or symbolic. Mm -hmm. Like exactly, painting with lyrics. And I really like his style and I hope we get to see more of that. I'm I really happy too. RM and him like I feel like RM's mentoring him a little bit. Me too. And they're a perfect mentorship pair. They are. Yeah. Like so yeah, to be talking about 4 o'clock and getting per to perform 4 o'clock. Um, and then they're on to the next venue. This, uh, they go to Thailand. This episode, they're speeding through the locations at this point. Um, and I, I really liked that they opened talking about Thailand and saying like... It's like meeting old friends again. Yeah, they're like, when we started here, our, like the Red Bullet tour way back, Thailand was one of the most accepting and open and they had a lot of fans there and so they feel like oh this is the place that supported us from the beginning mm -hmm. and that was really sweet for them I don't know I like feeling like they're among friends because they must feel a lot better on stage yeah um and they were able to have a little vacation so now when they're prepping in Thailand you can see they're a lot more awake mm -hmm. and fresher and like being a little goofier and just it makes me happy they take breaks during these tours because there's a big difference. Um, we're skipping through the videos we go to be able to speak on things. I don't know. I, I just feel like we're watching them be happy. Like, yeah. there's nothing really going on that's big or it's just little small moments and happy moments mm -hmm. and connections. And they like go from to different locations. Right, they go from Thailand to Indonesia, and uh, 
We have another moment where Jimin's just getting really insecure about his vocals and like you can he says he has a vocal coach there with him who's helping him pretty mm -hmm. regularly but he's still just taking everything kind of personally yeah and I think that's just gonna be a running theme with Jimin um, but it leads to one of my actual favorite little quiet moments and that's Jimin and Suga are riding alone together in a car and Suga looks tired he's like not even looking at Jim and he's like but your voice is really nice and they really like you. Like just mm -hmm. kind of trying to amp him up and being like, I, I love your voice. Yeah. yeah. And Jimin is, I don't know, not in a bad way, but kind of like absorbing that praise. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like he's in puppy dog mode a little bit. Like he's a little needy and Suga knows that. And Suga's good at genuine compliments when he wants to be. So he's just like, no, bro, chill. You have a beautiful voice. They love you. Like, and it's, especially when you're subjecting yourself and your talents to millions of people, like, oh, yeah. that poor baby, yeah. especially when he already has insecurity problems, like, oh, talk about heightened anxiety. So I think it's so um, amazing how, I mean, obviously they're going to be supportive, but I just love how amazingly supportive and loving that each member is. Yeah. Well, and he puts so much pressure, too, because they're still talking like this is going to be their only world tour. Mm -hmm. So he's constantly like, well, if I mess up this, we'll, we won't be back for a long time, and I'm going to ruin ARMY's experience. Like, his mind is often in, like, the audience will be sad that I messed up. Yeah. Um, and in here, like, Suga even has an interview bit where he's talking about, like, of all the vocalists, Jimin's voice is kind of his favorite in terms of his personal taste mm -hmm. and how he just, like wants to give him advice and wants to give him confidence and just see Jimin kind of realize his goals. Um, and, you know, he talks more about how Jimin can be really insecure. But, yeah, it's just a really nice little quiet moment where you can kind of see their personal friendship. Yeah, I thought it was cool how they were talking, too, and how uh, they tried to have Jimin rap, and yeah. he couldn't rap. And so... Sugar was like, okay, well, if he can't rap, then he has to sing. Right. Like, it was like, if there's no Jimin, there's no BTS. Like, I loved it. Right. He uh, was like, he has to be in BTS no matter what, so he has to sing. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. it. It's interesting how we have this subtle uh, r and mentorship going on. I think we have a bit of a Sugar Jimin mentorship, mm -hmm. but it's never stated out loud. It's just you can see they're being good big brothers, right? They're yeah. picking the maknes that they feel like they can help the most and just... Encourage. Helping each other grow. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, so then they go to another location and... Uh, Which is funny because Jungkook and J-Hope are super close too and dance and like film. That's what I'm saying. I, I really That's... do think they're like, how can we help each other? Yeah. You know. Uh, from here... Oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit. Well, we finally get the full scene of Jungkook pranking Jin with the chocolate balls and his noodles and I love that it's just so obvious he's gonna pull it Jungkook's just like waiting and watching and mischief face and he's like do it eat it eat it like silently yeah, yeah. it's really cute and they have this just I like seeing them eat ramen because that's like a, my favorite our thing. poor go-to food and it, I don't know it's fun to still see them be like oh why can't ramen be healthy um Jungkook gives performance advice was just basically just don't think about it the more you think the more you'll mess up just mm -hmm. you know you've got it just clear your head and go um they talk a little bit about how concerts are and what it's like to travel oh this part. yeah i was gonna say this part i thought was a little earlier but there's a bit so this is the part we're gonna kind of settle into i think for a minute let me check time yeah we're good um so in part of the interview and like interspersed with concert scenes, Namjoon is talking basically about how uh, he doesn't get to be himself a lot anymore. Like, Ugh. he basically says, you know, I don't, I didn't have enough time to live as Kim Namjoon. He's constantly living as RM and he just wants to like go get beers with friends and hang out. But like fame doesn't really afford him that. And he, it causes him trouble because when you're famous, He's saying, like, they're constantly getting advice to, like, oh, don't talk too much. Let the fans, like, fill in and, you know, think what they want about you because they'll, like, make up their own stories and hype you up even if it's not real and you should be good at controversy. But he's like, I'm really bad about that. I'm actually a really, really open person and I'm 
constantly just wanting to say exactly what's on my mind. Like, I, I think out loud, I do all this stuff. But that kind of is challenged by being famous and him constantly be afraid of saying the wrong thing versus just not being a person who edits very well and not being a person who's good at figuring out what to say and what not to say. Mm -hmm. And this was, this moment really got to Ashlyn. Well, yeah, you know, it actually broke me. Like, I was like, she was crying. <laughs> well, you know, my biggest fear, like, reason why I never want to be famous is because, you, you know, like, it makes it harder to do the things that you want to do. And the fact that, like, he's voicing, like, the same fears that I have are, like, the same things that he doesn't, not necessarily doesn't like, but that he is kind of sad he never had the chance to do, like, to mm -hmm. live as himself, you know? And, like, being able to walk in nature and, like, going mm -hmm. to drink with your friends, like, those are two of the most simplistic things in life. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he can't do that, like, ugh. Yeah. He even makes a point of, like, like, Army has even found them. They've had little videos of seeing him out by himself. But he's like, I have to do that. I have to take these moments where I just go out and do something and am wholly myself so that I can reconnect to who I was because sometimes I can kind of get lost in my identity as mm -hmm. RM through BTS. So I need to take, like, you know, go to the park, go to a museum, go to something, and just be simple for a moment, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think that's what it was. It's He's talking your worst fears is, is his reality. And that's hard to hear from someone you care about. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually a good little chunk of time. And it doesn't help that it segues into the time he broke his toe. So he's, like, coming off stage and can barely walk and he's like crying and they're icing him or he's not fully crying but he's trying not he's to. like dude this hurts <laughs> like this is the rm has a jungkook moment from earlier and it's really awful to watch especially knowing that he's like no i can do it there's only two songs left and he went out and performed those two songs with a broken toe barely able to move backstage and yet he comes out and looks no one would tell right and it's like even more impactful too that like it's like the music but then all you hear is kim nam Chun. Yeah, they're all cheering. That really got me, too, the way they edited, edited that, that piece. Uh. To be like, well, they're demanding you be out there. Yeah. And it's not like ARMY is bad, but it's just like the pressure he has to switch from being himself, who's hurt, to RM, who's a figurehead and has to be on stage. Mm -hmm. um, even though he wants to be, it's not a bad thing, but it's intense for him. Um... And from there they go to the BBMAs, which is a lot of stuff we've actually seen before. It's extra behind the scenes clips and like interviews and them being really sweetie cuties, uh, like just humbled to be there and happy to be there. Um, and finally they're able to head back home to Korea. And uh, they're talking a lot about how like they never thought that they'd get this far at all. They never thought they'd get to the BBMAs. They never thought they'd do anything. And that it's still hard for them to even, like, conceptualize the fact that they are BB, BB, BBMA yeah, Billboard Music Award, Award winners. winners. Yeah. Yeah, Jin's like, yeah, Suga keeps teasing about it and be like, yeah, we're Billboard Award winners and everything, but there's this underlying message that, like, we work hard not to change, even though we've won this award. Um, and they're gonna keep working just as hard as before, and are really into like thoughtfully and purposely trying not to change and trying to be humble and I think that's really cool to see and really important to see um, definitely yeah so I, I love that they're using their platform to still talk about things that impact them yeah I'm trying to be real and uh, things that impact us yeah too, as you know youth mm -hmm. and that's the whole episode like Outside of uh, RM's really heartfelt speech and the broken toe moment, there's nothing really dramatic. And they show a lot of concerts all at once. But there's like this overwhelming feeling of dreams coming true very quickly and how they're handling that. Definitely. And I feel like personally I could talk about Nam June's chunk. Like I could a talk. A whole other video. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. That like really 
shook me. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll work it into other things or just... Oh, no, it's fine. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's. I think it's really important to know. It was very know. personal. Yeah, yeah. It touched me. Um, and that's what made it your favorite episode, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, definitely check it out. It's a great episode. Um, we just... It's sometimes hard to know that we think all these exact things about them, but in reality we don't know anything about them, mm -hmm. right? So it's nice to hear from their mouths what they're feeling and who they think they are and where they think they are and all that. It, it's really nice. It is, definitely. So, We're very lucky. We are. It makes me feel less uh, insecure about maybe... I, I constantly feel like, what if I'm constantly wrong about them, mm -hmm. right? Like, what if they ever watch their video and, like, they do not know us <laughs> at all? Look at that stuff they're making up. So it's it's nice to see reality. And I hope that they're happy. <laughs> Me too. So leave in the comments everything you liked about the video. Uh, what were your favorite parts, your favorite moments, your favorite lines? Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a discussion. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to hear what you all think. So until next time, live long and prosper. Also, like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.